right now what we have done is in the last class we saw a demonstration of a package called maxima that I used to derive basically the modified equation okay and amongst various things so we saw we have already seen the effect that the extra terms that you get in the modified equation we have investigated in earlier classes what is the effect of adding the second derivative term what is the effect of adding the third derivative term fourth derivative term and so on. And in the last class we actually saw that by adding appropriate terms to the differential equation it is possible for us in a targeted way to eliminate certain terms in the modified equation okay. So now what we will do is we will see we will look at a demo right solving only the linear first order one dimensional wave equation okay we will look at a demo. I started a little of it in the last class but we will just go or we will look at the demo and see whether all the properties that we have predicted everything that we have predicted so, so far see as opposed to Laplace's equation Laplace's equation we just solved it, right you had to went ahead and you solved it uh, it is a relatively uh, what should I say robust problem right the uh, I, I will explain to you maybe towards the end of the semester when we do a little calculus of variations where that idea comes from I have already given you the essence of that but uh, it is a relatively robust problem so I had no qualms about asking you to just go ahead and solve it numerically you understand what I am saying writing a program. But by the time we came to a wave equation we did a little analysis and the idea was that you know we will find out whether it works whether the schemes work and so on and we found that there were issues stability related issues right and there could be what do you call it the fact that the equation is modified and so on. And based on these things we have made predictions as to how the code will work and now we will actually run the code and see whether those predictions how they work out to what extent are they true how do we interpret these how do we inter interpret the analysis that we have done am I making sense okay right. So <coughs> let me run that uh, this is by the way as you can see it is a program written in python I am using a, the user interface is built using a package called python card which is built on uh, wx windows. So what we will do is let me just start that off okay I quickly get rid of this get rid of that I just I have made a few small changes since the last the code is an evolving code few small changes since the last time uh, for example if I say reset uh, oh, I have eliminated the reset anyway okay fine. So right now as I said, if it does not if you cannot make out it is right now set so this window that pops up here allows me to choose various and sundry schemes uh, it is set by default at FTCS there is an FTCS 2 a variation that we will look at later which is basically FTCS with the second derivative term knocked out okay. So that according to us should have been a stabilizing influence we will check that out there is FTFS, FTBS so all the schemes that we have looked at there is a lax Vendorf scheme uh, McCormack scheme which we have not looked at you can go check that out and there is FTCS applied to heat equation. So all of it is wave equation except for the last one which is heat equation. So these are the schemes that I propose to look at. Uh, in uh, in this demo we have already seen what happens when you apply FTCS to this uh, to this uh, equation. So basically it looks like uh, you know it is supposed to be unstable and indeed it does behave as though it is unstable right it is diverging I have not bothered to rescale simply because uh, we just want to know whether it whether it diverges once it goes beyond out of the screen right it does not make any sense anymore. We can try increasing the number of grid points to see if that makes a difference. All that does is that that ramp looks a little better but wherever the ramp is it starts to oscillate and remember the notion of high frequency is associated with the grid size. So we can see that it is the high frequencies that are diverging right so that this is near near very close to the frequency highest frequencies that are that can be represented on this. There is still propagation the basic feature of the equation is still there it is still propagating in the x direction it is just that it is eventually going to diverge 
okay so since i don't want to get into trouble with that i uh, the other possibility that we thought about was would it work if i lowered my cfl so instead of 1 if i made my cfl 0.1 would it work so this is going to point 0.1 so this is a little arithmetic that we have to get right the point 0.1 given that the speed is the same and the grid size is the same lowering the cfl by point 0.1 to point 0.1 means that the delta t has become one tenth right so we really need to take 10 times the time step i'll increase the number of time steps the little window here is the number of time steps you really need to take 10 times the time steps to effectively get the same time step and then you see that <coughs> the behavior though it is uh, smoother than last time why is it smoother it looks uh, cleaner it's not diverging as much so the growth is not as fast right the growth is not as fast because the mu2 term the size of the mu2 term has gone down the magnitude of the mu2 term has gone down the magnitude of the coefficient of the second derivative has gone down but uh, it still seems as though it's going to diverge right and there's nothing that we can do with this right unless you want to try something smaller if you if there is hope and sometimes this happen you fall in, we fall into this trap saying oh let me make it a little smaller maybe it'll work for that right always a little hope so if you want to make it smaller since i made it point not 1 i'll take 100 time steps at a time and uh, we reset and who knows maybe it'll actually work no nope, there it goes so it's not supposed to see the point is it's not supposed to exceed exceed 1 this is like having a having a dam that suddenly breaks right so i expect that the water to flow out and right now i mean you will see of course the in the next class i will show you that it is possible that crests and peaks form in real life it, it does happen right but right now the simplistic model that we have we expect the water to just translate we don't expect anything else and it it doesn't look like that's going to happen right because of the because i'm taking i'm doing more work my program is taking more time because i'm taking 100 time steps each time but we are not getting anything out of it it is going to eventually diverge i mean it's there all the all the symptoms are there is that fine okay so the next thing that we do is we look at uh, ftfs let's look at ftfs and go back to cfl1 i'll reset it what do we expect I don't want a hundred time steps. Maybe I'll take just one time step. What do we expect? FTFS. What do we expect? It's supposed to be unstable. You going to blow up? Why don't I take a hundred time steps? What's happening? I'm actually clicking on that button. right i thought it's supposed to blow up i've taken at least 400 time steps so far the trouble is everything is zero the only point that is non zero is at the left boundary am i making sense the only point that's non zero is at the left boundary and it's not participating in the computation ftfs is only using points to the right of the first point and only the first point is non zero all the other points are zero so the computation just isn't starting off there's nothing to do am i making sense you're just manipulating adding and subtracting zeros right okay so there may be times and it's possible that we look at this uh, you have to be very careful so you have to the the thing one thing that you remember from this is you have to have a sense of what is the answer that you expect especially when you're developing these codes you have to have a sense as to what is the answer that you expect what is the behavior that you expect okay yes from the numerics point of view we expected it to diverge but from the physics point of view the physics of the equation if i may say i expected this wave to propagate the fact that it isn't propagating right tells us that there is an issue the fact that it isn't diverging doesn't mean that oh we are happy saying that oh i have a steady state solution i managed to get the solution 
is very important. The fact that it is not diverging does not mean that we have, we have and it is not changing. Delta u is you, you understand the change in the solution from one time step to another time step is 0. So it is very easy to look at this equation and look at this and basically say oh I have got the solution I have a steady state solution okay. So not true. Let us try, let us try FTBS, FTBS of course I will take one time step let me reset that just for good measure and as you would expect right FTBS with sigma equals 1 right behaves the way we expect it to behave. In fact if I reset it and I take uh, let me take 50 time steps okay it makes it half way I take 50 more time steps and it goes it is actually just at the just at the exit it is just gone through the domain am I making sense okay the propagation speed is right I mean that it, it looks reasonable that the propagation speed is right. But of course uh, the ramp is still there so if you want to represent if you want to represent right if you want to represent that step the closer you want to represent the step the finer your grids will have to be fine or you will have to do some fancy grid generation okay which is sort of outside the scope of this course but you will have to do some fancy grid generation okay there are two ways we can go now right since FTFS we have already seen the stability condition did not quite work out the way it is supposed to work out what I am planning to do is I am going to run CFL greater than 1 right I do not know if you guys have tried this I am going to run a CFL greater than 1 so I will run 1.1 1.1 is supposed to diverge 1.1 is supposed to diverge okay so I guess I could just take 50 time steps in one shot so that uh, on the other hand it may it may blow up okay fine I take one time step there is that peak so it looks like it is going to go right it looks like it is going to go they look sharper than you notice they look sharper than what we got with uh, FTCS it looks a lot sharper than what we got with FTCS okay. So is it worthwhile going you think or should I just stop let me take 10 time steps at a time and see what happens clearly it is diverging but it is also being propagated out and it is gone okay so this is an important thing. So you can turn around and say wait a minute it is supposed to be unstable this program had no business working well it depends on what you are looking for if you are looking for the steady state solution it actually works okay and why did it work because we are looking at a finite domain I am looking at an interval here which goes from 0 to 2 pi okay and now it is a matter of dynamics it is blowing up is it going out like it is like. Uh, getting to a game that ends in a tie in a sense right you do not know what is going to happen you do not know which is which is going to which is going to which is going to go which is whether it is going to blow up or it is going to make it out fine okay. So you have a you have a you have a you have a you are if you are looking only for the steady state solution the transient is clearly wrong right the transient is clearly wrong fine okay. So there are there are there are there see that these look I know I am sort of going through there are some obvious but there are some observations I want to make which are extremely important for the kind of work that you may do in CFD okay. So if you are looking for the steady state solution right now what I seem to have said is I do not care what the transient is like as long as I get my steady state solution okay. The second thing is your computational domain uh, is finite we cannot handle infinite computational domains right so unless you do something interesting you cannot handle infinite computational domains typically we truncate the domain okay typically we truncate the domain and in that case even if your scheme is unstable it is possible that any unstable mode if it flows out of the system that you still get the steady state solution fine okay so it is unstable the scheme is unstable 1.1 it should not have worked. Uh, maybe towards the end right I will come back to this and run 
we will rerun this and maybe I will run 1.2 or 1.5 or whatever it is see larger values I do not want I do not want to just crash my program right now but right it is not so robust that it can I, I can recover from a crash okay fine. What about smaller values of CFL? What do you expect? If I run 0.5, any predictions? Did I do this in the last class? 0.5, if I take one time step, that looks the same. That looks a little different, you may not remember it. So maybe what I do is I take 0.5, I have halved the time step, right. So maybe I will I'll take 20 time steps at a time which is equivalent to what is happening, can you tell me what is happening? No dispersion was what you saw when, uh, not dispersion, what is this, FTBS. What did you expect? What 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 was it? What was it when it was one? Let's run sigma equals one again. If you were to do a just say instead of a ramp, it's actually a, it's a step. Okay, we know it's a ramp. So it's a ramp. You do a series expansion using Fourier series, right? In order to get the ramp. In order to get that ramp, all of those have to match exactly. If they do not match exactly, you will start seeing oscillations, okay. So, when we did 1.1, you actually saw that. So, if you do 1.1, it starts to oscillate at that point, okay. It is not just diverging, there seems to be some, 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 uh, but if you do 0.5, maybe I will reset it. If you do 0.5, what is happening? What was the other phenomenon that we had? It is clearly stable, but there is something that even, even 1.0 is stable. Just describe to me what is the, what happened, what has happened to the curve? The curve seems to have become smoother. The curve, curve seems to have become smoother. In order to get that, in order to get that steep step, what do I need? See, all the high frequency terms have disappeared. That's basically what's happened. Okay, it's dissipative. It's DK. I mean, I prefer the high frequencies are DK, right? Because at 0.5, basically what's happening is the high frequencies are going away, so the curve is getting smoothed out. Right, the curve is getting smoothed out. Am I making sense? So the high frequency terms are going away, and uh, the curve is getting smoothed out. If you're again looking only for the steady state, you don't care. But if your steady state has a discontinuity in it, then we have a problem, because uh, this may not be what you want. Right? This may not be what you want. It's supposed to be a step. Instead of a step, you get something that. So you could say that why don't we try a larger number of why do not we try a larger number of grid points and see whether that makes a difference. So if I go to I do not know 201, I will just double it just for the fun of it. If I go to 201, yeah it is it is sharper but you can you can see that it is still getting rounded off, right. It is just that I can represent much higher frequencies because the grid is finer that is all. The definition of high frequency I have changed by changing my grid. But on that grid it is getting rounded and it progressively gets worse. It progressively gets worse, okay, right. So it is very clear this has a, it has a second derivative term that is basically dominating all the other terms. It also has a fourth derivative term and this combination is causing higher frequencies to decay, right. So that you are getting a curve instead of getting a step or a ramp in this case of a representation, you are getting a nice smooth curve. Should I try something smaller? Do you think it will get any better, any worse? Yeah, so I do not have that much, I do not have that much hope for this because right off the beginning you can see that it does not, it does not seem to help. 
it does not seem to help. When I made the CFL smaller, can you make an observation from last time to this time? Is it more dissipative than last time? It looks more dissipative than last time, right? Because it had a 1 minus sigma, <coughs> right? So as sigma gets smaller and smaller, the coefficient of the mu2 term, the, co the coefficient of the second derivative term is get is get is definitely getting larger. Okay, so my I'm stressing the code out here. Fine. What else do we have? You want to try? There are two possibilities now. Maybe we'll maybe what we'll do is we'll look at the heat equation, and this idea of dissipation and dispersion we'll look at a little more carefully. Okay. So uh, before I do heat equation, let me do FTBS itself. I have a little thing here in the bottom where I can add waves. So for instance, I can add a a sin x okay and to this <coughs> I will add I will make the amplitude smaller so I can add with an amplitude of 0.5 uh, a wave number of 10 a wave number of 10 so I can add right so I am constructing basically what I have done is I have done sin x plus 0.5 sin 10 x okay. So if I if I if I run this at CFL one with FTBS, it just goes. In fact, because it's true, I have am taking two hundred time steps. It's too many time steps. Okay. So if I run it with CFL one FTBS, you can actually see that, and there doesn't seem to be within what you can make out with your eyes there does not seem to be any change in amplitude nothing is there it is translating beautifully translating left to right. What happens if I change the same one to 1.1 CFL yeah there starts the oscillation where is the oscillation starting why is the oscillation starting there. So that is where the high frequency content is right I had a sin x but it is not continuing as a sin x what is coming from the left hand side is a constant function. So you have you have a function if you think about uh, periodic periodic extension that you would do in sin x I mean for Fourier series right then you have a function that has a the derivative has a jump there are a lot of high frequency terms that will show up there higher terms that will show up there it is no longer once it has shifted it is no longer just sin x plus sin 10 x because there is a little straight line segment that is shown up rate which is going to now include a, a lot of high frequency terms and you can see that that is there. So it looks like if I were to go to 0.5 let us go to 0.5 I will reset it we will start from the beginning what do you say anything perceptible. It looks like the sin 10 x term the amplitude is dropping what about the sin x term not so much okay not so much maybe I will add a, a sin 20 x or a 40 x or something of that so let us let us let us add a I do not know how a 40 x will look let us add a 40 x and see what it looks like and not try a 40 x okay so that is that is that is needless to say it looks interesting. Okay, the graph on the bottom I am plotting using 800 points. The graph on the top I am sampling at 200 points, 201 points. Okay, so obviously they are going to be sharper corners. You immediately see the quality of the function has changed. And if I take, you can see the 40x is decaying really fast, right? And before you know it, the 40x is gone. Fine. And all you are left with is right. So this sort of moves. This this we can possibly explore a little more because this is also simultaneously translating. There are high frequencies supposedly being introduced on the left hand side, which is the reason why I've implemented the heat equation because heat equation you have set a equals zero. Right? We have the dissipation term, but we have set a equals zero. only trouble with heat equation with the 
I mean just one time let me take one time step instead of two times this is, this is really dissipative okay see two time steps it is going to disappear so I take one time step that 40x is still there two time steps it is almost gone three time steps it is gone okay and in this case it is very clear that the high frequency is going faster than the low frequency it is really decaying faster than the low frequency is that fine okay. So if you want to see how many I have done if I take 10 time steps at a time there right the, the, the 40 x lasts about 3 or 4 time steps it is not there at all okay. So that is 20 time steps, 30 time steps, 40 time steps, 50 time steps, 60 time steps that is gone right and now if you want to patiently wait, if you want to patiently wait this is going to take a long time. Okay, so if you are looking for the steady state solution let me take a 100 time steps at one shot this is going to take a very long time if you are looking for the steady state okay. So I want you to bear this in mind this is something that you will note I will recollect I will recollect this behavior at the end of the semester right because I need it elsewhere. So yes it is nice that high frequencies decay faster than low frequencies but if I am looking at the steady state solution right if I am looking at the steady state solution and I am looking for the steady state solution and this is the way that the error term is going to go the low frequencies are going to be a headache to get rid of. If this is the error term this is the rate at which my error term is going to decay the low frequencies I, I have taken you know the high frequency is gone I am looking for the steady state the steady state solution in this case is 0 because the heat equation temperature is held 0 at both ends the steady state equation solution in this case is 0. So now I am taking in hundreds of time steps and it is not going right it's, it, it, it refuses to go away is that fine okay. So I reset let us try let us try something different okay if I take heat equation 0.5 is the stability conditions as 0.5 we are right at right there so if I make it 0.6 will it make a difference let us take one step at a time well it says still seems to decay not clear is it yeah let us try 0.7 reset. So these first few time steps seem to work quite well you say wait a minute what is this they all seem to work what is the problem there is a difficulty you want me to make it one was there a mistake in our stability analysis. So this is another one of those things that you have to be very careful with when you are doing CFD it looks like something is converging and you may go along thinking it is converging till it starts to diverge right. So you say hey, it is converging it is fine I am doing great I have run 5000 time steps I code is converging it is converged 3 orders of magnitude you understand what I am saying. So oh, for engineering purposes that is good enough this is a classic argument for engineering purposes that is good enough no when you are developing your code make sure it converges okay when you are developing your code when you are making production runs you have run it for test cases right you are making production runs and you have some parameter like a or whatever it is and you run it for a equals 1 a equals 5 you want to try it out for in betweens it is worked for a equals 1 a equals 5 then in between yeah let it you know you can say 3 orders of magnitude engineering accuracy it is enough but when you are developing the code when you are actually developing the code you want to make sure that it is going to work if you give it single precision it will work single precision if it goes double precision it is going to converge to double precision you understand if it does not you want to know why it is supposed to be stable okay and for those of you who may be interested in research there may be a research problem there somewhere. So yeah this seems it is going to go you can see it is going fast okay it is going fast uh, pretty pattern but it is going fast 
So I say okay, let me quickly recover, try to recover. I go back to 0.5 and uh, hmm, that seems to have held it. Let me take 10 time steps at a time. So this is like a, a small struggle going on, right. So high frequency somehow they grew, they took, took time to grow, grow. they also seem to take time to go back, okay. But uh, I am taking 10 time steps at a time, let me do make one shot of 100 here. Fine. Let's try something different. Okay, let me let me reset this. So that was at one. I had to push it to one. Would the same thing happen if I did it at point six, or was that an illusion? After all, one point one worked. But remember, here there's no advection. It's not being carried out. Whatever you have is there. Okay, whatever you have is there. So that was it. Yeah, it seems to decay. And just like in the case of, just like in the case of, uh, what do you call it? In the case of CFL of one, you don't usually call it the CFL for the heat equation. I don't know. Yeah, there's some something, some activity. Right? It's really strange. It's really strange. And then there is this temptation saying, oh, maybe just before it you know blew up I can take that as a solution there are all sorts of your, your mind starts playing tricks on you right. So yeah so go back to 0.5 and yes it is the behavior is about the same I will take a 100 time steps and yes there seems to be some kind of strange propagation come okay. So here we go. What if I tried, uh, what do you expect will happen if I try something smaller instead of 0.5 I try 0.1, want me to try 0.1, I will take one time step, so as you would expect it is fine, it seems to work. Okay, as you would expect, it is fine, it seems to work, it is decaying. Uh, if I take a 100 time steps in one shot, it goes quite fast. Okay, I am going to do something a little funny now. So, what I will do is I will start off with 0.6. So, I want to know is this more decaying faster than, is it decaying faster than 0.5? Is 0.1 decaying faster than 0.5? I mean, after all, it is heat equation, it should be the same. So what we will do is we will do this uh, 0.6 business, okay, one shot we are there and then I will change it to 0.1, okay, it goes quite fast, right, <laughs> okay, so 0.1 is definitely decaying faster than, remember the modified equation, modified equation for heat equation at fourth derivative, fourth derivative is really, really fast, right, especially on those high frequencies what derivative is really really fast so it just completely knocked it out right whatever whatever you had whatever you had it completely knocked it out and now now we are struggling with this okay the reason why i'm harping on this thing is I'm, i really want to i really want to emphasize this this is very important for us now we are struggling our convergence it looks like will be basically depended on especially if you're looking only at the steady state solution right you understand what I mean by looking only for the steady state solution, what I am proposing is, what I am saying is just like we showed that in heat equation marching in space, uh, marching in time is the same as sweeping Laplace's equation in space, right. It is possible that you are looking for the steady state solution, right. So you have the time derivative and you then you start marching in time and you say I want to wait till I get to the steady state solution and there is a small error I need to get rid of the small error, well this is the small error. And the small error is supposed to go to 0, it is not going to 0, okay, fine. Uh, before I change this, let me do one, one more because I, 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 I do not know if you remember this, I will do 0.16666. If you go back and look at the modified equation, 
right there was a that that had a one sixth right it had a one sixth so let us see what it does if I take one sixth mm, behavior does not seem to be that much different from what I can make out right so there will be 6 derivative terms 8 derivative terms so there are higher derivative terms so you just have to see as at 1 6th as to whether it is converging faster not converging faster okay that is as far as uh, let us look at one that I have not uh, uh, done so far which is FTCS 2 I called it so this is FTCS with the sigma squared by 2 that term added on second derivative that term added on so that it explicitly knocks out it explicitly knocks out the second derivative term in FTCS which we identified we pointed to that and saying oh this coefficient is negative that is why it is diverging. So first of all if I do this and I run for a CFL of 1 this should work it should look like FTBS it should look like FTBS. what do you say does it seem to behave like FTBS yeah there is no decay no nothing there is no visible decay nothing of that sort it seems to behave just like FTBS is that fine okay what happens if I lower the what happens if I lower the CFL or do you want me to raise the CFL and see what happens first let us take one, one time step at a time I raise the CFL so yes you can see that the 40, 40 x term first of all was growing but minute enough of it came in from the left hand side it is very clear that enough of the right it is very clear that that high frequency content is also uh, growing so okay so it seems to have so that behavior from FTCS and FTBS what if I try CFL 0.5. look at what is happening carefully try, 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 try to think about give me a, I mean think about what I mean can you make out what is happening there is something funny happening here the shape of the peaks and curves they are changing but they are changing in an unusually slightly different fashion from what you saw earlier you want me to run it again I will see otherwise we will run a smaller CFL I think then it will become more clear right because it is sharp there are you no know, look, look at what happens to those what happens to those sides like look at look at the seems to be some kind of rotation kind of a thing going on is not it see there is this I do not know can, can you make out okay maybe this does not make sense so yeah it is decaying high frequencies are decaying it is also translating very much like FT, F, FTBS very much like FTBS let me try CFL point 1 and see whether we are able to get something out of this CFL point 1 so allow me to take 10 time steps at a time right CFL point 1 10 time steps can you see that kind of a it is not just translating it is not just decay this there seems to be some right some kind of a little rotation like thing going on is it apparent okay so this is a this is a strange thing what do you think is happening this is true dispersion okay this is true dispersion I have knocked out the second derivative term there is only a third derivative term and higher derivative terms the third derivative term now has a coefficient that is quite large okay but it has a, a negative sign so basically what is happening here is the low frequency is traveling faster than the high frequency the low frequency is traveling faster than the high frequency so what you would expect and what will actually happen is as we progress with this you can see that here the low frequency the high frequency is being left behind the sin x term and the sort of sin 10 x term are going and chugging along at their own, own pace right it is just that it is just that the uh, 
sin 40 x is sort of being left behind of course it is also decaying because there is a it is also decaying the magnitude is also growing uh, dropping right because the term gets knocked out exactly only when there is uh, when there is you have fourth derivative term here what do we have maybe I should count I will give do a count the high frequency there is completely gone and therefore even here it is completely going I will do it with the count now so that uh, 40x if you want I will add uh, so by this time by this point actually the amplitude of the 40x is, is almost gone and this is the 10x maybe what I will do is I will add a 20x also just something in between right let me add a 20x I will reset that we will take uh, instead of 10 time steps at a time if I take 100 time steps what is going to happen. with CFL of 0.1 okay so that is half the sine wave that is gone almost half the sine wave that is gone half the sine x that is gone okay the 40 x of course decays quite fast and uh, the 10 x of course travels reasonably fast. Okay, so we have about a quarter of the original sin x term left. Okay. So by the time you go through, by the time you go through and the sin x is completely gone, so then the sin 20 x is left behind. Am I making sense? Is that okay? Okay right so you you can we can you could try it out see this is this is a case where it is dissipating we could do the same thing with a of course we could add a third derivative term explicitly and find out what happens right or you could do it with ftcs itself if you take a small enough cfl it will turn out that it will it will grow if you take small enough cfl it will start to diverge but before it diverges you can see that the low frequencies are actually traveling faster than high frequencies Is that okay? Are there any questions? Okay, so I think uh, you could try this. Let me see what. Uh, I tried this with. Let me leave it with. Let me leave it. Let me leave it with uh, 401 grid points. See what happens here and I will take 200 time steps at a time so CFL is 0.1 right if CFL were 1 200 time steps would take me half the way okay it will take me half way but CFL is 0.1 so it is going to 200 time step is going to take me now it is going to too small you want me to take 400 time steps may have con other consequences we will see if it has other consequences because I am going 400 time steps things definitely look a lot smoother but here I do not know say I do not know whether in the video it is going to show up but here you can see that something is travelling backwards your eye tends to pick up the big motion which is the sin x so it look like it look like because your eye is connected your reference frame becomes sin x it looks like the rest of it is actually, actually propagating backwards. So if you were to gra graph it I do not know whether on the screen it shows right it actually seems as though something is propagating backwards because you tend to tie with you your, your eye tends to follow that sin x the, the big feature and the smaller features basically tend to travel back and they are in, in reference to that travelling backwards okay. So uh, so that I, 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 I have lost count so that 
I lost count of it, but the whole point of doing this was for me to keep track of how many times I had done it, but anyway it is okay. So yeah the problem with of course larger times large, smaller CFLs and larger uh, what should I say grid size is your time is going to the time that it takes to do anything is going to increase okay. So it is very clear that typically right now one lesson that you draw from this is larger CFL if you are looking for the steady state solution larger CFL is better than smaller CFL okay that is one conclusion that we come to. A larger CFL is better to run if you are looking for a steady state solution than a smaller CFL okay if you are looking for the transient that is you are looking for a time accurate calculation a time accurate calculation right then your delta t will be based on what is the accuracy that you are looking for within the stability limits right but bear in mind that if you just pick up a delta t you have to ask the question what is this stability what do I mean by the accuracy that you are looking for that I am talking from from the truncation error point of view but that is not enough you can have dispersion and dissipation I will give you a real life example okay I give you a real life example just say your sensors out there basically say oh there was an earthquake under the ocean somewhere right you have used uh, satellites come buoys to figure out what is the height of the wave that is there okay over the Bay of Bengal or the Indian Ocean as a consequence you know that a tsunami may arrive to the coast right so if you have if you have dissipation and dispersion that does not exist in the system see now I am carefully wording it because the system itself may have dissipation and dispersion right remember the bag of potato chips right there is there is always dissipation and dispersion. So if you have dissipation and dispersion that does not exist in the system then you may mispredict what is the size of the wave you may mispredict when it is going to arrive if you mispredict the arrival time it has consequences serious consequences if you mispredict the height of the wave then uh, people may say oh there is this wimpy wave that came in they warned me they told me to evacuate so the third or fourth time they may not evacuate when you tell them to evacuate am I making sense so accuracy it is not a matter of saying that oh I have got delta t squared accuracy you know I choose 10 power minus 6 I choose a microsecond or a nanosecond to predict it is not enough you have to make sure that there is no dispersion and dissipation because clearly dispersion and dissipation seem to affect the the amplitudes that you are getting they seem to affect right propagation speeds propagation speeds which in that in that example that I gave you will uh, affect arrival times is that fine okay so I think uh, we will we will we will take it as a given now I, I just uh, that if we wait for this essentially what is going to happen is all the uh, low frequency to components are essentially gone and uh, all that is left behind is the high frequency component which will by the way eventually propagate out in case you are thinking they will also eventually propagate out and you will get this correct steady state solution right so if you are looking only for the steady state solution yes this is uh, the scheme is going to work it is just that in between you got oscillations that you were not expecting is that fine okay so there are a whole ho there are there are uh, a whole host of uh, conclusions that I have come to from these demonstrations they are all very important they are going to show up at various times I am going to use this information at various times in the course as we go along right to either introduce techniques or introduce ideas okay is that fine right are there any questions okay so tomorrow what we will do is uh, tomorrow we will look at uh, the quasi linear wave equation which is more closer to the kind of equations that we are used to right I am not going to spend a lot of time on that because I want to get very quickly to the uh, at least one dimensional flow so that something looks like the Euler equations that you guys are used to solving in your uh, in your gas dynamics classes at least right okay is that fine right thank you